Hello. How's everybody doing today? Very good. My name is Todd Herring. I uh, am the marketing director at Art Prize. How many people have been to Art Prize? Great. And you went just this past year. Very, very good. Um, I'm going to talk today a little bit about a concept of health uh, in creative placemaking. Art Prize is seen as a creative placemaking effort. Um, I have a little video that I need to skip real quick here because I'm going to explain. Hey, it's connected. All right. Very good. Nope. And next. Okay. Um, basically, what that video is is just a little hype video about Art Prize, but because I only have 14 minutes and 22 seconds left, I'm going to give you the rundown real quick. Uh, Art Prize is an international art competition, the largest in the world. We do that by combining $560,000 in prizes with an open call for artists and venues. Now, the three things that make Art Prize unique is one, that open call. The art world doesn't tend to actually like that we do that. And the other point is that it's independently organized, like TEDx events. Um, venues and artists connect, they do their show on their own. So Art Prize plays no role in where the art goes or which art actually gets into the show. The third one is that we do a public vote. The public vote decides who takes home the top prize. This past year it was $200,000 taken home by a Californian artist named Madonna Carr for a large-scale drawing of elephants and animals. Anybody see it? It's pretty cool. So that's what our prize is. Our prize has been considered and been recognized uh, nationally as a creative placemaking effort. So I've studied creative placemaking uh, a fair amount and noticed uh, some things that I believe are actually missing. So Art Place is an organization that's funded by the NEA, uh, and they invest heavily in creative placemaking efforts across the country. Um, the NEA actually gave Art Prize last year a $100,000 R-Town grant. All of these things are connected. Now, my issue with what's happening in creative placemaking is that it's getting more and more complicated as uh, these efforts are growing around the country. For example, um, what is creative placemaking? You see we have the 13 principles of creative placemaking by Art Place. Now, uh, one caveat that you should know about with these 13 creative principles here is that um, the list is very long and hard to understand. Um, you would assume that this would be a pretty basic, simple concept for people to do something like this. Art Prize is a very simple concept that started, uh, went forward, we're in our fourth year, but there's obviously a myriad of logistics that go into making that event happen, and a lot of different lever lever levers that we pull to try to make the Art Prize event fit more into this creative placemaking effort. Now, an example of why this list is uh, a little bit too long and complicated is, let's take a look at number five and number six. Number five. You're creating a place that people want to go. Very good. Number six, you're creating a place that people want to linger. That's not enough that people want to go there, they need to linger. See, a 7-Eleven, you might go there, but if you linger, you're weird, okay? Um, so you think about, all right, what is the lingering quotient of a certain place, and what is the effectiveness of it? Now, I point this out. Art Place is an amazing uh, organization. They do uh, very wonderful things, uh, but sometimes we find that uh, the way that they will quantify where funding goes can be complex and hard to understand, and therefore sometimes really great uh, placemaking efforts might not receive funding um, because things like their vitality index score might not be exactly where a group of people in Washington might have uh, decided where it should be. So there's a list of 13. I've uh, boiled it down to what I believe to be uh, three things that are essential for creative placemaking, uh, and that's Create conditions for uh, these three things. Creativity, collaboration, and commerce. Together, happening in one space, happening surrounding one either event, program, place, uh, or function. So creativity, what does this mean? A lot of people aren't prepared for what it actually means. Um, a lot of people just want uh, paint on walls, they want to see murals, they want to see kids finger painting in large scale in downtown environments. What creative, creativity actually means is that there's a free exchange of ideas, freedom of speech, offensiveness. There are radicals oftentimes involved. Um, we're going through an issue where an artist who had an effigy of Saddam Hussein in a birdcage was torn down by the venue owner, and the artist has burnt it. And uh, It seems like, man, that is a messy situation that is causing a lot of problems for Todd, but in fact, uh, the dialogue surrounding this for copyright issues, for the role of the artist, the role of the venue, uh, has been a very, very important conversation to have in Grand Rapids, but it's messy, and we need to be okay to have that. Failures and the fail, fa sorry, failures and the fa wait, failure and the failures who fail spectacularly. I actually wrote it, but I can't speak it very well. Um, 
in creativity, you're going to have snark, you're going to have competition, but you're also going to have love, loyalty, and acceptance. Uh, but bottom line is you're going to have the dirty mess that risk takers bring to the table, and that's what we want. We want that there. Um, you have collaboration as well. What does that mean? Meetups. You've got demographic mashups, also known as diversity. A good example uh, from Sarah's talk, her wedding was a demographic mashup. Um, where you have cultures that are colliding. And again, that's going to be messy, but it needs to be intentionally done. Diversity doesn't just happen. It doesn't, just, uh, it doesn't naturally evolve. You have to actually create the conditions for uh, groups who have different ideas, different feelings to come together and connect. Um, you have funding for, that spurs on this collaboration, platforms for connection. Uh, Rick uh, DeVos, who founded uh, our prize also founded Start Garden. It's a platform to create these connections. Um, the ecosystem that evolves, and then the social safety net for messy failures. You want messy failures to be okay. We want artists at Art Prize to take huge risks and feel okay coming back and trying the same risk over again. Um, we want to have that safety net so it's okay to do it. Low risk ways to test high risk ideas. And then the third one is commerce. Pretty simply, you can buy stuff, you can sell stuff. You can pay people to do stuff. You can be paid to do stuff as well. And it's easy for these things to happen. Um, access to products, competition for buyers, and a place where monopoly is just a board game. And I'm not suggesting that uh, regulations to end monopolies, monopolies is the way to go. What I'm actually suggesting is that existing brick and mortar businesses aren't controlling Main Street. Um, and our prize is a perfect example where commerce floods the streets in an exciting and uncontrollable way. Um, it's scary at times, but at the same time, what we're seeing is an eco ecosystem develop because of that. So these three things, you have creativity, collaboration, and commerce that are happening in different ways that essentially make the, the parts and pieces of an effective placemaking effort. So what's the point of my talk here with health? Why is health not on that list? Why are these placemaking efforts not looking at the health of a community as opposed to looking at uh, really hard-to-measure scores? Uh, and especially when, at the end of the day, what everybody really wants for their community is they want healthy life, right? Now, creative placemaking also wants this. They're, they would never say, no, we don't want to have healthy life in communities. Um, but unfortunately, the rhetoric that goes around it becomes a little bit confusing um, and not necessarily direct and to the point. Um, we'll say things like, um, we want to have... Uh, vitality infused with courage uh, so that we have a healthy arts culture to support an effective and uh, growing life for our community. Healthy and life are often mixed into these kind of complex solutions that are known as mission statements for a lot of arts organizations, cultural programming, and essentially creative placemaking efforts. We're all going for the same thing, so why not cut to the chase? Why not cut to the chase and say, what is this actually doing for the health of our community? Now, nobody's worried about health, it's not entirely true, but the things that people are worried about, the metrics that creative placemaking efforts are in fact looking at um, instead of health are on this little tree that I've created. We've got economics, so economic impact. Our prize worked with uh, Experience Grand Rapids last year to do an economic impact study. This was incredibly uh, effective for us. Uh, it went on all of our grant applications. Um, it, it was a major tool for funding, but it was expensive to do. We didn't pay for it, Experience Grand Rapids did, but we had to partner with this organization and it took time and resources from, two, from both our prize and Experience Grand Rapids to make this thing happen. Um, there's community economic status. So you look at the, the economic status of a community, if you say if it's a wealthy community, um, then it's okay to spur on arts culture because they will actually be successful patrons of that arts culture. But then the flip side is if you have an impoverished community, they say arts is a way to uh, spur on growth in that community. But then the flip side also is that if you have an impoverished community, they're not gonna be able to afford to attend the arts programming that's being happening in that community. So there's two sides to every uh, coin in these arguments, and what, it, what ends up happening is it becomes merely subjective based on the funding resources. Uh, because you can look at every economic situation differently and assume arts is going to have a different impact uh, upon it. Education, meaning the education of the patrons, uh, we had over uh, estimated close to 20,000 kids come down to Art Prize this year, which we're really excited about. That's a metric that we point to. It has a massive impact on the education of our community. 
Um, but also then the community predictors. What is the existing educational standards in that community? Are they high? Are they low? How are they actually going to integrate and adapt to the educational programming that's being proposed by the arts institution? There are thousands of pages that you can write about ArtPrize and do studies on what it's doing from an educational perspective. It's two things, though. It's complex and it's subjective. It's hard to understand. Um, whereas health, in my mind, gets pretty simple. Then, of course, there's engagement. How big is it? Now, our prize has a really good thing going for it. It's freaking huge, right? Um, it's easy to estimate engagement, 400,000 people coming through downtown, but other placemaking efforts don't necessarily have that. Or those other placemaking efforts are trying to um, spark in smaller communities. So therefore, their engagement uh, factor isn't necessarily going to be quite as effective. So health is the apple that fell off that tree, that metric tree of these creative placemaking efforts. And why is that? Why is it just sitting down there in the corner? Well, arts don't do healthy. They don't have to. They do arts, right? Besides, we have medicine. Uh, in Grand Rapids, we have the Medical Mile, the Van Institute, all these great places that are growing and doing healthy. Fitness does healthy. Health does healthy. Parks do healthy. Planning departments do healthy. Arts don't do healthy. Health is just a fringe benefit. You laugh you enjoy the beauty of art, and you just benefit from it that way. It's not a direct uh, motivator, a direct goal of it. But why should we? Why should we in the arts and in, in cultural institutions care about health? Uh, and there's two really basic reasons. One, it's easy to quantify. It's simple. Did people move? Did they eat well? Did they get fitter or fatter? Now it's like, how am I going to change the cultural programming that I'm going to do so that it does these three things? Well, I'll tell you the just a little bit what our prize is doing to do that. But the hard questions are, what is the economic impact? It's not easy to come to that conclusion. Um, an already cash-strapped uh, cultural effort, um, the thought of them doing an economic, economic impact study is really, really difficult. What was the overall community engagement? What were the vibrancy indicator scores? That's, I didn't make that up. That's an actual term that's being used by ArtPlace that the cultural institutions across the US are expected to uh, navigate and understand so that they can actually go out and get funding. The other reason why we should care about health is that it's the ultimate equalizer. Uh, this is a picture of my dad. That's a picture of Rich DeVos. My dad drove a limousine. Rich DeVos um, probably was driven in many limousines, right? Uh, they didn't have too much in common except the fact that they both have had a heart transplant. Now, these two never met, but if they did meet, if they did have the chance to meet, they would talk about their heart transplant. They would talk about the emotions associated with it. They would talk about the fear of it. They would talk about their doctor. They would talk about their health. They would suddenly have scores and scores of things to talk about. That collaboration that we mentioned. Now, for economics, they didn't, that doesn't work to connect them. For engagement, it doesn't work to connect them. Rich DeVos is engaging in totally different activities than my father was, right? Um, education also is not a place where they find common ground, but health is something that we all find common ground on. It's the place where we can collaborate simply and effectively. And it can be that starting point that gets us into an art museum. It can be that starting point that gets us into a cultural experience, a demographic mashup, all of these things that we talk about for collaboration, heart, or health can be that, that springboard. So what is Art Prize doing? What have we done this year? We had simple stuff. Um, we laid down 18 miles of chalk stencils throughout Grand Rapids. Um, what this did is there's uh, a few places, a few anchor points within the Art Prize event that draws people in and they stay there. Um, one of them has a parking lot. Uh, it's called the Bob. I don't know if you've been there. Um, but what we did is we put these chalk stencils all around, and you could actually see people realize... Now, there wasn't that many people that actually walked a nine-mile walking path through our prize, but what they saw was that our prize is bigger than where they were right at that point. And there were a lot of people that took the three-mile path. There were cross-country teams that came downtown to take the six- and nine-mile path. People were biking and scootering. The event became much more decentralized. The other thing that we're doing is we have um, public transportation. Uh, that we sponsor, we have our art bus. Uh, public transportation has been known to get people to walk more. Now that's what I mean by health can be simple to quantify. People are walking more, they're moving more, they're being forced to actually step outside of their comfort zone of taking their car to a place and having a singular location. Um, so walking past public transportation, and then we're staying decentralized. Decentralized is uh, 
one of the main components of our prize, because we're independently organized, any space can be a venue. Um, and we're encouraging this. We're encouraging that venues stay spread out. And we're connecting these venues by these walking paths, by these transportation routes, so that people actually engage the urban space in a way that they haven't done it before. And we believe that um, partnering he with health makers, essentially, is also the next step for arts and cultural institutions to take health and make it part of the forefront of what we're doing with creative placemaking efforts. Um, I believe that it's been overlooked significantly in the past with these activities, and I, for one, as uh, one of the organizers of our art prize, am going to work to make a change in that, and I hope that all of you do that with me. Thank you. <laughs>